There is not one single topic that I get asked more about here on YouTube than SVOL, the Simplify Volatility Premium ETF. This is one of the most unique and synthetic investments I've ever looked at. 17.84% distribution yield? Are you kidding me? When we think of high yield, we used to think of QYLD, and we know that investment has significant capital appreciation consequences. Is SVOL a unicorn with ultra high yield and no downside consequences? Is that possible? Let's find out. All right, let's dig in. The SVOL Simplify Volatility Premium ETF. This ETF seeks to provide investment results before fees and expenses that correspond to approximately one fifth to three tenths, the inverse of the performance of the CBOE Volatility Index or VIX short-term futures index while also seeking to mitigate extreme volatility. <laughs> what? That's a lot of investment jargon that needs to fully be understood and we should never ever invest in something that we don't truly understand. Let's start with volatility. What is volatility? Market volatility is defined as a statistical measure of a stock's deviations from a set benchmark or its own average performance. In other words, it's the very definition of what happens when a stock is supposed to do one thing, yet it does something drastically different. Think of it like riding a bike or driving your car just down a neighborhood street. Odds are things are going to go just fine because you've done this hundreds of times before. But that doesn't mean you might hit a pothole or have to swerve to avoid a squirrel or a person and things immediately change drastically. This is done with the CBOE Volatility Index, which goes by VIX, V-I-X. The VIX measures changes in the value of short-term S&P 500 index options. As volatility increases, these options go up in value and there is an increase in the VIX index. The VIX is also known as the fear index because increased market volatility almost always coincides with shifting markets and uncertainty about the future. Check out this graph of the VIX price history. You'll notice going back to 1990 that with the exception of these spikes, the VIX is relatively range bound and not moving much up or down. These spikes, by the way, are the housing crisis in 2008 and the March 2020 COVID crisis. Remember, the VIX measures volatility, so when volatility goes way high, so does the VIX index. And consequently, when volatility is down, so is the VIX index. One additional term we need to understand before we can continue is the idea of going long on an investment versus going short on an investment. When you go long on an investment, it's the very same as buying shares of a stock. You think it's a good idea to own Tesla or Apple, or Microsoft, so you buy shares of Apple or Tesla or Microsoft. This is known as going long, you own the shares. Now the opposite of this is betting that a stock is going to go down down in value. And to do this, you actually have to borrow a stock from somebody else and then sell it to somebody else with the goal of buying it back at a lower price. All right, so now that we know the basic terms here, let's take a closer look at how SVOL implements its investment strategy. SVOL's strategy is a multi-step approach. Number one, they bet volatility will stay low and short the VIX index with VIX futures contracts. In other words, instead of thinking that the VIX will go up and betting that that will happen, instead they're betting that the VIX will stay low, AKA volatility will be low, so they are shorting the index. They're betting against it. As long as volatility stays low or doesn't spike, the contract, which is a futures contract, is profitable, and they distribute income from the profits on a monthly basis. But Joe, what if volatility does spike? Are we screwed? The short answer is no, and the much longer answer is hard to say. And here's why. The second step SVOL does to protect against market spikes and hedge their position is to purchase a call option on the VIX index that is way out of the money and would only be profitable in the event of a major spike in volatility. In other words, we're betting that the VIX index is going to go down, but at the same time we know that it's possible the VIX could go way up during this time. So just in case we're going to bet and make a very small bet that's very unlikely to come true that will hedge our position. The majority of the time this hedge would expire worthless. This is just like buying our homeowner's insurance. The insurance premiums we pay are sunk costs, but give us peace of mind in case the worst does in fact happen. Some of the money SVOL makes every month goes to this insurance hedge against the potential of the VIX spiking. SVOL has been in place since May of 2021, so let's see how it has performed compared to common other income ETFs we have talked quite a bit about in the past. Jeppy, Devo, 
and SCHD. With respect to both cumulative cash flow during the period and portfolio balance with dividend reinvestment on and off. All right, I've got some performance results here back from the origination of the SVOL ETF, which occurred in May of 2021. We're gonna look at results for these investments from May of 2021 through February of 2023. Before we look at the results, though, I wanna show you this interesting chart which breaks down the volatility or adjustments in VIX compared to SVOL. Because remember, SVOL is trying to track the opposite of the VIX. In order to make this viewable, I had to stretch it out way far to the right, so we'll scroll over in just a second. But SVOL is in red, and the green is the VIX. And this chart is measuring the date or the history way back from the origination all the way to current day way over here to the right. And you'll notice along the left-hand side, there's a percentage here. This is the percentage change day over day in the investment compared to each other. And what you see is to some extent, an opposite strategy taking place. Every time the green is down, the red is up for the most part. Every time the red is up, the green is down. And as you scroll over farther and farther to right, you'll see how this continues to happen all the way from May of 2021, all the way to February of 2023. In this approach here that we're looking at, we're assuming a lump sum investment of $100,000 at the beginning of the period when the fund just launched. And I recognize that not everybody has $100,000, nor is this an expectation that you should invest $100,000 into this fund. It's just to give an apples to apples approach between this ETF and the others based on the same starting date. So during this period, we're gonna assume the $100,000 lump sum investment. We're also got reinvesting the dividends and just living on the dividends. And we've got dividend income cumulatively compared to portfolio balance as well. And let's take a look first off at the dividend income. You'll notice here that SVOL is definitely outperforming the other three. Jeppy is in a relatively not close second place at $16,477.96. And then with respect to portfolio balance, again, during the reinvesting dividends timeframe, this outperformed all three others as well. Now with just living on the dividends, you'll notice that SVOL still wins with respect to dividend income during the period at 21,000 compared to 15,000 for JEPI, 8,000 for Devo, and 5,600 for SCHD. And from a portfolio balance perspective, we're no longer in first place with SVOL, primarily because that high dividend income is not actually being reinvested for more shares, which would lead to eventually more income. Let's take a look at a chart here for portfolio balance from May of 2021 to present. And this is reinvesting dividends. In black, we have SVOL, Jeppy is in orange, Devo's in green, and SCHD is in yellow. And you'll notice here that there's not a ton of correlation between SVOL and the other three. It definitely outperforms and potentially underperforms briefly as well during the time frame. Here's a look at the cumulative cash flow as well, charting back all the way to May of 2021. You'll notice that SVOL is way far beyond the other three. Here's a slightly different view. We're looking at not reinvesting dividends, but during the same time frame. You notice that from the outset, SVOL is winning big here. But as we get into 2022, we'll notice that the black line is underperforming all of the other funds. And here's the cumulative dividend income when we are not reinvesting dividends. You'll notice here, uh, far and away, SVOL is outperforming the other three, JEPI, SCHD, and Devo. Number one, it looks great on paper as a great way to earn a ton of yield and a great way to diversify your portfolio. It doesn't appear to exhibit a lot of the capital erosion concerns that have plagued QYLD. And this fund has an amazing distribution yield right now. But here's my sticking point currently. SVOL was launched in May of 2021 and is relatively young. Let's take a look back at the VIX going back to this date in May of 2021. You can tell here from this chart that it does appear that there has been some volatility built in. However, as you look back here to historical timeframes, you'll notice that there have been much higher spikes in the VIX much more than we've experienced today. Ultimately, we don't know what's going to happen if and when we experience significant volatility like we did in 2008 and 2020. When you look at the underlying holdings for SVOL, you'll notice that they do a relatively good job of layering in their investments. They've got their main holdings, these treasury bills and US treasury notes right here. Then you've got two VIX calls. These are the protective call options. March of 2023, $50 call. And then for the VIX, April of 2023, $50 call. And with that, we have the CBOE VIX futures here. These are the investments that we are shorting, which is why they're negatives right here. So they do a good job of layering their investments. And I'm sure the people over there at Simplify ETFs are really smart people, much smarter than me. But there is risk here. It's an intriguing investment that should not take up any meaningful part of your portfolio. If you really like the cash flow, maybe 5% up to a maximum of 10%. Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below as it's my goal to respond to every single comment left on the day I post a video. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day. Hope you got some value to this video and thanks for watching.